Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 10. This is going to be another extremely high-end water-cooled build. For those of you who know Singularity Beast 2, this system is going to be similar but even more high-end. It's going to have dual loops, four 480mm radiators, 20 fans, and it's into the Case Labs Magnum TH10. It's going to involve a small amount of modding, and I'm also going to be doing custom cables. Now, I custom build each of my systems individually based on client requests, and sometimes clients come to me with components from their previous build. That's what's happened with this build. Around half of the components are from a previous build. The rest of the components are new. It's now time to get started with an overview of all of the components. So I'm going to start with the components from the previous build. The Asus Rampage 4 Extreme, Intel Core i7-3930K, the CPU is actually still in the motherboard. 32GB of Corsair Dominator GT, there's an optical drive in there, two Corsair AX1200s, two Corsair Black individually sleeved cable kits, two D5 variant pumps with Bitspower Shining Silver mod kits and Bitspower Black Acetyl mod tops. A Lamtron FC5, which I'm not actually going to be using, you'll see why shortly a Samsung SSD and a couple of Western Digital hard drives. I have here three EVGA GTX 680 Hydro Coppers. And you can see that they've been dismantled, I'll talk more about that shortly. Some lighting and a whole bunch of Bits Power Shining Silver fittings. So that's all of the components from the previous build. Now for the new components. The Case Labs Magnum TH10. I have here 16 Noise Blocker Black Solent Pro PL2s, so there's four more on the way. I'm going to use these as radiator fans and case fans. I have some of the new coolants quick disconnects, which I may or may not be using depending on the drainage system I end up going for. I have some UNZ2 brackets, these are 120mm mounts, four 480mm Black Ice SR1s. I have EK water blocks for the Rampage 4 Extreme and the memory. Also, the EK Supremacy. These are all Nickel Plexi CSQ. I also have EK water blocks for the graphics cards, and you might be wondering why when they're all EVGA GTX 680 hydrocoppers. This is because the client wants to match up all of the water blocks in the build. But you might be able to see from the packaging that these are not CSQ water blocks. I'm going to talk more about this coming up. I also have non CSQ backplates for the graphics cards. I have some Mod My Toys splitter PCBs for the massive amount of fans in this build, an Aquero 5 Pro, two bits power upgrade kit 250s, the Acetyl version, an Asus Sonar D2X, and a whole bunch of Silverstone 120mm dust filters. So that's an overview of all of the components going into the build. Okay, I'm going to put a link on the screen to my review of the K-Subs Magnum TH10. I'm not going to give much detail on the case in this build log, so make sure you check out the review if you want all of the details. I'm also going to put a link on the screen to the Singularity Beast 2 build log, because that build was also into this case. For those of you who are not familiar with case labs, they now have a wide range of different cases. And one of the best things about case labs is that their cases are modular. When purchasing a case labs case, you have a wide range of different options available. You can really design these cases how you want them, and you can go back at any time and choose from a whole bunch of different accessories to upgrade and change your case. So the first thing I'm doing is preparing the case. I'm so used to building systems where for the first few weeks all I'm doing is modding. Modding is incredibly time consuming, I mean if there's painting involved, even just changing a few panels can take weeks. So it's really different to have a build where I can just immediately start installing components. Before I install any of the components from the previous build, they need to be closely inspected and cleaned. So I have the motherboard, graphics cards and memory laid out here ready to go. Once I've cleaned them, I can start installing water box. So I also have all of the water box here ready to go. This is how the graphics cards came with the EVGA Hydro Copper water blocks removed. So all I need to do is clean them and install the EK water box. This is what I use for removing Tim and also for cleaning components in general. It's Arctic Clean. I've used it for many years and it works extremely well. Now I absolutely love building into systems with removable motherboard trays because half of the build can be done outside of the case. You can install all of the water blocks, you can even tube up on the motherboard, then you can also prepare the case, you can install all of the radiators, fans, 
pumps, reservoirs, you can even start tubing up inside of the case. By the time you slide the motherboard tray into the case, the build can be just about finished and then all you need to do is finish the tubing up and the wiring. Particularly with water-cooled builds, a removable motherboard tray is a great thing to have. I've finished cleaning up the motherboard, graphics cards and memory. So I can now install all of the water blocks. I've also started installing components into the case. I've installed both of the power supplies. Yes, two AX1200s is overkill for this build. I'll talk more about that later in the build log. I've also started preparing the hard drive cage. I've installed the SSD and hard drives. I need to install a fan into the front of the hard drive cage, not to provide extra cooling to the hard drives, but as part of the thermal design that I'm going for in this build. I'll talk more about that later in the build log. The SSD is a Samsung 840 Pro Series 512GB. The hard drives are Western Digital Green 2TB. I've now installed the memory, also the CPU, motherboard and memory water blocks. The memory is a 32GB kit of Corsair Dominator GT. It runs at 2133MHz, 9111027, 1.5V. As you can see, it fills all of the memory slots on the Rampage 4 Extreme. Now moving on to the installation of the graphics card water blocks and backplates. Now, when EK released the CSQ design, water blocks with the old design became very hard to come by even after a short time. So, I assume they immediately went out of production. I even had a lot of people coming to me asking me if I had water blocks with the old design or if I knew where they could get them from. And then after a number of months, I'm not exactly sure how long, EK released a number of components with the old design, including this water block and backplate. So I thought that EK may be partially going back to the old design. EK has actually recently released something that they call ThinkCell on their website and it's where you can go and vote on the aesthetics and design of certain EK products before they are released and the one that gets the most votes goes into production. So I'm going to put a link in the video description to EK's ThinkCell. I know a lot of people don't like the CSQ design so this is your chance to get some products released without it. It is still multi-choice and EK puts up the options but there is a fairly wide range of options. So the reason I'm not using CSQ graphics card water blocks to match up with the rest of the CSQ water blocks in this build is because of something I've talked about a number of times previously. I want to set up a crystal link configuration in parallel between these graphics card water blocks and with the CSQ design it's just not possible because of the restrictive inlet outlet options. Now EK has recently come up with a solution for this and you can see this new solution on some of the Titan water blocks. So basically when the CSQ design was released on graphics cards you only had a single inlet and outlet on the side of the water block. And you can see with this old design you have two inlets and outlets on the top and bottom of the water block. So this design gives you a whole lot more freedom and allows you to use you know basically any multi-GPU water cooling fittings. I've now installed the graphics cards. Now, I get a lot of questions about the fittings that I use, in particular Crystal Link. And it's something that I've covered a lot of times previously in detail, but I get a lot of newcomers. So, still consistently I get a lot of questions about fittings. I may actually dedicate a video to fittings coming up soon. But something I haven't talked about much is BitsPower's different multi-GPU water cooling options. There's three different options, and one of these options is very common a lot of people know about it but the other two options people don't use very much and one of these options I've only seen used less than five times all of the options are excellent in every way and they all have completely different aesthetics and you know they're certainly all options that I would use in any one of my builds so first of all crystal link it's specifically designed for multi GPU water cooling configurations it's just acrylic tube, 12mm OD, 10mm ID, and it comes in different slot widths. So, 2 slot, 3 slot, 4 slot, and 5 slot, and each slot width has 3 different lengths. So you get 3 lengths in a packet, so there's a lot of different lengths and it covers all of the different slot widths. With Crystal Link, you need to use multi-link fittings, there's 2 different types. Multi-link, which has 2 O-rings inside, and Multi-link Mini, which has a single O-ring. The difference between them is size, which means different strength and aesthetics. In a situation like this, where you don't have much acrylic tube showing, you may want to use Multilink Mini to show more of the tube. 
but with Multilink Mini you have less strength so that is something that you need to take into consideration. Now this is an option that BitsPower has released recently. They call it the adjustable Aqualink pipe. There's version 1 and version 2. There's two different lengths. It's a telescopic fitting. It's adjustable and between the two different lengths it covers all of the different slot widths. Now Coolance has had a fitting like this available for a long time now and there's also some other companies with this design but it's great to see Bits Power's version because the quality and aesthetics of their fittings is just unmatched. So you can see the design is very simple it's also very strong there's actually three o-rings inside of this fitting so there's very little chance of it failing and leaking you can dismantle it to replace the o-rings now this is my favorite option. This fitting has been around for a long time. It's a BitsPower D-plug. It's actually a quick disconnect, not a no spill quick disconnect. BitsPower also has some of those now. There's a one inch version and a mini version. And the mini version fits perfectly in a one slot width between graphics cards. So it just gives you the one length. It's not adjustable. But the best thing about this fitting is the aesthetics because most multi-GPU water cooling fittings have a very small external diameter. This fitting has a large external diameter as you can see and it looks awesome. You know, in a parallel configuration between multiple graphics cards, this fitting looks amazing and you really don't see many people using it. So I've set up the Crystal Link config between the graphics cards and I actually ran out of multi-link fittings so you can see there's one missing there. And the reason I went for Crystal Link between the graphics cards is because I'm going to be using a lot of acrylic tube throughout the rest of the build. I've installed the motherboard tray into the case. I've also installed the Asus Sonar D2X. And I'm in the process of test fitting a bunch of different components, in particular the pump and res configs. Now I'm doing custom cables in this build. I'm not just sleeving the cables, I'm also customizing the lengths. And if I'm going to go to the trouble of customizing the lengths of all of the cables, then I want the cable routing to be perfect. But as some of you will be able to see, the, there's some problems with the cable routing in this case for an ATX motherboard. It's really designed for a HPTX motherboard. Some of you might be thinking, why didn't I go for the ATX motherboard tray? That's because there's no ATX motherboard tray option for this case. This is the only motherboard tray option and it gives you you know all of the different form factors now the big hole next to the 24 pin just so that you know is there because I've removed the cover off the back of the motherboard tray and there's no way I'm using that for cable routing because it's massive and it looks terrible so anyway basically cable routing is a problem the other problem is the pump and rose configs there's no good flat surface to mount them onto I want you know the background behind them to be clean not full of holes and panels at different levels but it's not just for aesthetics it's also because I, the mounting system needs to be incredibly strong for these pump and res configs because they're very heavy mainly once they're full of coolant so the first thing that comes to mind is to completely remove the dividing panel the mid plate in this case and replace it with my own and cut my own cable and tubing routing holes but that's very extreme so what I'm going to do is make a mounting plate for the pump and res configs and I'm going to fix both of the problems with this one mod I'm going to also use the mounting plate to fix the cable routing so I'm going to go ahead and measure that up and get started so this is a very basic mod but it's going to vastly improve the aesthetics the cable routing the pump and res config mounting it's going to really clean things up inside of the case so I've completed the measurements, I've cut out the panel, I'm using 1.5mm aluminium and I'm now working on the mounting holes for the pump and res configs. Now the mounts that I'm using come with the BitsPower mod kit and they're designed for mounting this config to a vertical surface. If you want to mount it to a horizontal surface you can use the mount that comes with the BitsPower upgrade kit. So, BitsPower has these two different mounting options and I use them all the time in my builds. They're strong, sturdy, high quality and if you're able to mount these configs to a vertical surface or a horizontal surface, you know, it gives you both of these options and it's perfect for different situations and different builds. So I've now marked out the mounting holes in the case. So these mounting holes are obviously to mount the panel to the case. 
At this point, I've stripped all of the components out of the case again, and I've now reinstalled everything to do a full test fit of the panel. So the panel is now in position, and I'm doing this test fit obviously to confirm my measurements, but also to mark out some cable routing holes. I still need to cut a cable routing hole for the 24 pin. I need to cut a slot for the SATA cables. Now, the 6 pin PCIe cables, I'm going to route vertically. They're going to go straight down to the hole that is directly below them. So the other option was obviously to curve them around and through this panel in a similar routing to the 24 pin, but it's going to be cleaner if I route them straight down. And, you know, that's going to, Basically, they were going to interfere with the routing of the SATA cables if I curved them around, so there was no way to cleanly route them. Underneath this panel is going to run the SATA cables, front panel cables. I need to run a cable out to power the sound card, and possibly other cables for lighting and other components. The 24 pin and also the pump wiring is going to go straight through this panel and out the other side. And because I'm running cables behind it, I've lifted this panel up approximately 10 millimeters. I've actually packed it up with M4 nuts, which helps to lock everything together. I've used M4 nuts and bolts for this entire configuration. I also had to pack up the upper mounts for the reservoirs. Now those mounts are from Bits Power, and I had to pack them up by approximately 15 millimeters so that the pump and res configs were parallel with the panel. To pack them up, I've used a hard plastic tube that actually comes with an XSPC radiator mounting system. Now, I mounted the, res the pump and res configs here in particular. I didn't want to push them any closer to the motherboard because I didn't want to make things look cramped. I didn't want to cramp up the cable routing, but I still wanted to allow room for the installation of 5.25 inch bay devices. Now, 5.25 inch bay devices are going to be restricted to the length of this optical drive. That's the only reason that I have the optical drive installed currently because I'm using it as a measurement for the front pump and res config. I'm not actually going to be installing the optical drive. As I always say, optical drives are terrible no matter what you do to them and you know this optical drive looks very out of place where it is. It's also going to block airflow to the upper radiator. So all that's going to be installed is the Aquera. So I'm in the process of cutting the cable routing holes. I've also drilled two extra cable routing holes for the pump wiring. And I've now finished painting the panel. So painting initially took about two days and then another two days for dry time. And I'm always very fussy about matching up my finishes. As you can see, I've managed to get these finishes very close. So that's it. The panel is complete and ready to be installed. I've completed the assembly and the mods are now complete for this build, except of course the custom cables. You're not going to see the real benefits of this mod until I install the cables because that's really what this mod was all about, working with the custom cables. Anyway, that's it for this part of the build log. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favorite if you want to see more.